Hello students, so today we will start a new chapter which is basically mathematical models with uh, second order equations uh, and uh, the first topic would be undamped free oscillation, right. So let us start. So basically uh, uh, in this chapter we will more or less talk about uh, um, the physical problems that can be modeled by using a second order ordinary differential equation. So, it somewhat falls into the category of mathematical modeling as well, right. So, um, we will start with uh, some second order equation, we will see um, how we can connect it with the physical problems and if possible we will also try to solve it, right. But uh, mostly it is uh, uh, giving, I mean uh, it is a way to give you a feeling of uh, how we model the physical problems using a second order um, ordinary differential equations. So, let us start. So, first of all uh, uh, free um, if we talk in this uh, uh, context, so free mechanical oscillation, what do we mean by free mechanical oscillations and how do we model uh, oscillations. So, uh, let us say, uh, let, let us consider consider a small oscillations uh, consider the not uh, the small oscillations um, of a mass spring uh, damper system damper system um, then the equation of motion equation of motion of uh, the uh, of the motion equation of motion of the spring is given by so it's somewhat m into y double dash gamma y dash plus k y is equals to some f of t and uh, y at 0 equals to y 0 and uh, y dash at 0 is equals to y 1 0. So, let us call it as equation 1, 2, 3 where uh, t is the time. So, this dash is with respect to t, t is the time, gamma is some constant which is positive and uh, k is also constant, k is also constant are the damping and elastic and elastic coefficients, right, coefficients respectively, respectively and uh, m is the mo moving mass moving mass and here f is the external or the driving force external or the driving force driving force so this um, system this system undergoes so called free oscillations, free oscillations when f is equal to 0. That means, when the external forces are 0, then we have the free oscillation. So, basically uh, you may have seen equations of this type um, in your physics I believe um, when you studied a simple harmonic motion. So, in case of simple harmonic motion also we uh, more or less got uh, the similar type of uh, equation. It was a second order ordinary differential equation and uh, subjected to some uh, initial uh, condition and then uh, you try to solve it uh, by using uh, our usual um, uh, this um, auxiliary uh, equation method and uh, from there we obtain the roots and uh, you see whether the roots are real, identical or complex and then you write down the solution and all. 
but uh, this is the this this motion um, of uh, of a spring or um, this motion of a pendulum they are uh, mo i mean the the equation of motion for them it looks similar actually so it's a second order ordinary differential equation or sometimes uh, harmonic oscillator and all that so all of them falls into the under the same category and it is called as a free oscillation when we have taken f is equals to 0. So, this is a very standard equation and you can find in any um, mechanics textbook even in um, a, a differential equation textbook right all right. Now, um, when do we call? So, here gamma is the damping and k is the elastic coefficient. So, gamma, uh, gamma is basically the damping coefficient and k is actually the since you are dealing, uh, dealing with a spring. So, we have introduced this uh, elastic coefficient. So, that actually describes the elasticity of the, of the spring. Now, uh, when do we call it an undamped free oscillation? Undamped uh, free oscillation undamped free uh, oscillation. So, basically uh, oscillations oscillations of uh, uh, this type occur oscillations of this type occur when gamma is 0. Obviously, when we are saying that undamped that means there is no damping. So, gamma has to be 0. So, when gamma is 0 in which case in which case the initial value problem we can call it as I V P initial value problem um, this um, let us say 1 to 3 1 to 3 uh, reduces to reduces to m y double dot plus k y is equals to f of t and we have initial condition y at 0 equals to y 0 and y dash at 0 uh, equals to uh, sorry y dash at 0 equals to y 1 0. So, now we have let us say this is equation number 4 this is equation number 5 right. Okay. So, since um, we can divide both sides by uh, by k and uh, but before uh, by m sorry, but uh, before that since we have also assumed undamped free oscillation um, next for free oscillation for free oscillation oscillations uh, f must also be 0 right. So, if f is 0 so, here this is also 0. So, then in, in that case uh, this will reduce to uh, m y double dot plus k y is equals to 0. Uh, Let us call this as equation number 6 and y at 0 equals to 0 and y dash at 0 equals to y 1 0 as equation number 7 um, or since uh, we are not changing let us let us not uh, worry about this equation. So, we we refer this one as equation number 5 which we had earlier right. So, this one equation number 5 is as it is. So, now from equation number 6 um, since uh, k is elasticity coefficient m is the mass. So, k by m is positive. So, we can write we can write uh, omega 0 square equals to k by m. So, then 6 becomes 6 becomes uh, y double dash plus omega 0 whole square y equals to 0 and uh, from here if you formulate that auxiliary equation uh, then you will end up getting roots as uh, plus minus uh, omega i and from there we can write down the solution as uh, y t equals to some a times e to uh, cos of uh, omega 0 t plus b times sin of omega 0 t right or c 1 c 2 that it does not matter. So, this is equation number 7. So, now uh, if I use the initial condition. So, by 
implementing initial conditions by implementing uh, ICs that means initial conditions uh, in 5 uh, we get we get um, a is equals to y0 because then we put t is equals to 0. So, sin 0 will be 0 and uh, this will be 1. So, a is equals to y0 and then you take the derivative. So, this sign will become cos, this will become uh, this cos will become sin, this sign will become cos and therefore, our b will become uh, y uh, 1 0 by omega 0 y 0. So, therefore, this is very simple to see right. So, therefore, y t will become y 0 uh, a cos omega 0 t and b will become y 1 0 omega 0 y 0 um, sin of omega 0 t. Um, now, uh, from here um, the numbers are we getting any y 0. So, here I calculated. So, if I do uh, let us see if I do y dash then it will become minus of a sin of omega 0 t and uh, this will become plus b cos of omega 0 t into omega 0. So, when I substitute t is equals to 0 this one ah, there should not be any y 0 here sorry. So, this 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 will be uh, this will be free from y 0. So, y 1 0 by omega 0 sin of omega 0 t and and this a is not there. So, y 0 into cos of omega 0 t and uh, the numbers omega 0 and uh, t is equals to 2 pi by omega 0 are called uh, uh, the natural frequency are called the natural frequency and uh, the period of the oscillation and the period of the oscillations right sorry about this. So, no a here and no y 0 here this you have to correct. So, this is um, I mean pretty much uh, you know uh, because you must have studied this uh, simple harmonic motion. So, this actually comes from there. So, and uh, you must have uh, solved these kind of equations. Now, here um, we can look into one small example and uh, suppose we have uh, the, the statement as this a unit mass spring that means m equals to 1. So, a unit mass spring mass spring system with damping coefficient k uh, sorry uh, elasticity coefficient k equals to 4 and no external forces and no external forces. Uh, starts oscillating starts oscillating from the point um, 3 by root 2 with initial velocity with initial velocity uh, 3 root 2. So, determine the um, the uh, motion equation of motion equation of motion and the corresponding solution and the corresponding solution. So, if you follow the terminology from the previous uh, derivation or the equations that I have written. So,
So, there m is the mass of the uh, that that actually moving and uh, k is the elastic elasticity coefficient, gamma is the damping coefficient right and f is the external force. So, here it says uh, no external force and unit mass. So, m is 1 and f is 0. So, the equation of motion the equation of motion is y double dash gamma is anyways 0. We have 4 times y is equals to 0 and uh, y at 0 equals to 3 by root 2 and y dash at 0 equals to 3 root 2. Let us call it as equation number 1. So, here if you do that, uh, that auxiliary equation part. So, here omega 0 equals to 2 and uh, y 0 equals to 3 by root 2 and y 1 0 uh, equals to y 1 0 equals to 3 root 2. So, by previous calculation, previous calculation our our a will become 3 and uh, uh, so we have uh, a is equals to y 0. So, a is equals to y 0. So, omega 0 is uh, 2 right. So, omega 0 is 2. Uh, we can write down the solution. First, let us write down the solution. Uh, so, for previous calculation our y t will become a times cos 2 t plus b times uh, sin 2 t right. So, now uh, from here we will get uh, if I substitute uh, t is equals to 0. So, then in that case this will become a is equals to 3 by root 2 and uh, to determine b I will just differentiate it. So, y dash t is equals to minus of 2 a sin 2 t plus 2 b cos 2 t. So, if I substitute uh, t is equals to 0 then y dash uh, 0 and uh, that is 3 root 2 is equals to 2 b uh, cos 0. So, b will become also 3 by root 2 right. Yes. So, therefore, the required solution the required solution uh, is y dash t uh, sorry y t is equals to uh, a is 3 by root 2 uh, cos of 2 t plus b is also 3 by root 2. So, sin of 2 t right and uh, I think um, if you put this root 2 inside 3 1 by root 2 cos of 2 t plus 1 by root 2 sin of 2 t and uh, if I write uh, you may remember these formulas cos of a minus b equals to cos a cos sin b minus uh, sin a cos b and all that. So, I also do not remember that formula at the moment, but uh, that root 2 uh, can be connected with uh, cos uh, pi by 4 and sin pi by 4 and their multiples. So, you have to put accordingly I do not know this should be cos uh, 7 pi by 4 or um, something like that and this one will be also taken in such a way. So, that you can write it as 3 times cos of 2 t minus some pi by 4 right. So, then it is a further in compact form, but up to here is also fine. Right. So, you, you can either bring it into the into that final form uh, by guessing what cos and sin pi by 4 combination will be there and you put it here and uh, that will be your required solution for this given equation. So, this is an example of undamped free oscillation right. So, that can be about a pendulum or harmonic oscillator or uh, this um, spring um, mass spring system and all that. So, this is one such example that uh, we can think of and uh, uh, we will include some in your uh, uh, assignment also. There can be other examples yeah definitely. 
Now, instead of undamped, we may have damped also. That means uh, that gamma is non zero. So, if gamma is non zero, then it will not bring much of a complexity, uh, but it could lead to interesting solutions, right. So, uh, damped free oscillations. So, damped but free, that means f is always 0. So, damped uh, free oscillations, oscillations. So, same equation uh, the first one that we wrote and there our gamma is non zero. So, then we will have m y double dash gamma y dash plus k into y is equals to 0 because we are still in the free case and then we have y at 0 equals to y 0 and y dash at 0 equals to y 1 0. So, this is equation number I don't know I lost the track so I will call it as 1 and 2. So, introducing the damping ratio. So, now we will introduce introduce the damping ratio the damping ratio uh, zeta by uh, zeta equals to gamma by uh, 2 m omega 0. So, that is gamma by 2 m uh, square root of k by uh, m. So, this is gamma by 2 square root of m k which is positive. Now, we divide both sides of 1 by m then y double dash uh, plus gamma by m y dash plus k by m y is equals to 0 and uh, this can be further written as y double dash plus 2 zeta m y dash plus omega 0 square into y is equals to 0. Right. So, since uh, now we have uh, a system of uh, sorry as a, um, a second order ordinary differential equation not a system uh, basically a second order ordinary differential equation and therefore, here let us call it as equation number 3 uh, we can determine the characteristics right. So, there uh, for second order OD we can write down the equations of the characteristics. So, the characteristics equation the characteristics the characteristics uh, equations or roots are uh, r 1 is equals to omega uh, minus of zeta plus zeta square minus 1 and r 2 is equals to omega 0 minus of zeta minus zeta square minus 1. So, these are the characteristics roots and then and then their nature depends on the sign of square root of uh, sorry not the square root, but the sign of zeta square minus 1. And uh, if you write down the auxiliary equation and uh, so, here basically characteristics roots or um, basically when you write down the, um, the auxiliary equation you know that m square e to the power y is equals to e to the power m x is the trial solution from there we form the auxiliary equation then we get the characteristics and from characteristics we write down the characteristic solution or the general solution right. So, um, here when you determine the characteristics it will come out as r 1 is, is equals to omega times uh, minus of zeta plus uh, uh, minus square root of uh, zeta square minus 1. So, now uh, the real uh, the, the, the characteristics of the root that means um, 
whether the root is positive uh, or um, uh, negative or complex, basically whether it is complex or not, that depends upon the property of zeta square minus 1. So, here depending upon the sign of zeta square minus 1, um, we can say that the roots are uh, real or complex. So, first of all, if zeta is positive, uh, uh, sorry, greater than 1, if zeta is greater than 1, then R1 and R2, then R1 and R2 are real and distinct, obviously are real and distinct, which means the general solution which means the general solution is y t equals to c 1 e to the power r 1 t plus c 2 e to the power r 2 t, where uh, since r 1 as easily, easily it can be verified, easily it can be verified. Um, R1 plus R2 is equals to minus of 2 zeta w 0 uh, omega 0 which is less than 0 and uh, R1 into R2 is equals to omega 0 whole square which is positive. So, from the quadratic equation rules um, both the roots both the roots are negative both the roots are negative, hence y decreases rapidly to 0 uh, regardless of the values of c 1 and c 2, regardless of the of the values of c 1 and C2 and uh, this is called as over damping. So, this is called as over damping, right. So, for uh, damping uh, free oscillations, uh, it is the generalization, uh, it is the particular case of the general case that we have considered. So, they are now we have to set uh, gamma also as non-zero and if the gamma is non-zero then uh, we arrive the characteristics equation with these settings and according to characteristics equation uh, if uh, zeta square minus 1 is positive, negative or, or, um, uh, or 0 then we will get the different properties of the solution as well. So, if we assume that zeta is greater than 1 then square root of zeta square minus 1 is always positive and therefore, we will get y t equals to c 1 e to the power r 1 t plus c 2 e to the power r 2 t. And uh, this is the situation which is called as over damping, right. So, basically it says that y decreases rapidly to 0 system uh, of, the of, of the values of c 1 and c 2 and uh, therefore, uh, this is a, a case of over damping. So, we saw that under damping and uh, here we have over damping, right. And for over damping, we are getting the solution depending upon the property of zeta. So, we will also see what happens when zeta is less than 1 and then how do we write down the solution, right. So, I will uh, stop here today and uh, I will continue this discussion on uh, damping uh, free oscillations in the next class. So, thank you.